California Governor Gavin Newsom traveling the country this week visiting the deep red states of Alabama, Arkansas, and Mississippi. He was in Florida today also. All in an effort to raise funds for his new political action committee campaign for democracy. The trip raising questions about his 2024 plans and about a seven-year-old state law that bans state-sponsored travel to 23 GOP-led states. It deems to be anti-LGBTQ and all of the states he visited are on that list. For more on this, we are joined by Alexi Kosef from Cal Matters. Alexi, thanks so much for your time this evening. Let's get straight to the optics because this certainly looks like Governor Gavin Newsom wants to be President Newsom. President Biden has not announced whether he is seeking re-election. Is Governor Newsom positioning himself as an alternative should Biden decide to not seek a second term? You know, I don't think that we can sort of explicitly expect that that's what he's doing, but there's no doubt that the way he continues to elevate his national profile is positioning him at some point down the line to run for president, maybe in 2028, if not 2024. This new venture that he has announced, the Campaign for Democracy, as it's called, is about building these kinds of connections in states across the country that he could need if he ever wanted to run for president and was facing primaries in all these different kinds of states. So there's very clearly, you know, multiple lever levels of thought and strategy that have gone in to um, you know a a effort like this one that he's just launched last week and Alexi, you know, in interviews with me and with you and others over the years, the governor has critiqued the Democratic Party for not being more aggressive in going after red state governors across the country. That's the kind of stuff that the president, Joe Biden, is not comfortable doing. Joe Biden is more of a let's all get together kind of uh, person. Governor Newsom, much happier going after somebody like Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Can you talk about the contrast between the two? And, and is it possible some folks in the White House are kind of happy that Newsom may be kind of doing their dirty work here? Well, I, I know I think that's a very good point, Alex. It's, it's allowing and freeing the president up to be more of that cross you know, across the aisle bridge builder that he campaigned on in 2020. And then you have, fig, you know, figures like Gavin Newsom who can be out there attacking Republicans, spreading that message, uh, you know, for Democrats to really pump up the base. I mean, what's interesting about this trip is that he went to Florida today to end the trip. It was sort of the most direct confrontation of uh, Ron DeSantis and his agenda that we've seen yet from the governor. You know, he's been criticizing him now for months, if not years. Uh, but he actually went today to the college that has been at the center of a lot of controversy in Florida because uh, Governor DeSantis there uh, completely changed the governing board to try to institute a more conservative approach to education and Newsom was there he slammed what DeSantis was doing he said Trump would whoop him in the presidential race and he really just went into the lion's den so to speak and and confronted um, Ron DeSantis on his own territory let me get your thoughts on this notion of traveling to these states that he himself has banned going to these GOP-led states. Florida is one of them. In fact, as I mentioned, all the states he's been at are on that banned list. He says that this is not being paid for by taxpayer money, that this is coming out of the PAC, his gubernatorial campaign, the leftover money there, and he's now put that into the PAC, his brand new PAC that he launched last week. But still, can this be used against him? Can his opponent use this against him? Is this another case of do as I say, not as I do? You know, I think it's a really complicated situation because as you know, this is not taxpayer money. And what's more, he's not the one who signed that law seven years ago it was his predecessor, Jerry Brown. So he's a little bit you know, being held to a standard that already existed. But nevertheless, optics are always extremely important in politics. And I think 
here is where you sort of see a split between those who feel he's being hypocritical and those who are glad to see him go to these places that have values vary in contrast to the diversity and acceptance that California is all about and and confront that intolerance, so to speak, on its own on its own ground. And and so Democrats may be a little bit more forgiving and more supportive of the fact that he's going against the spirit of this travel ban. And not to mention it's a very... It's really interesting to state. see that that uh, Tony Atkins, who is the head uh, Democrat in the state Senate, who is herself openly gay, uh, decided to announce that the ban should go away the day before Governor Newsom announced this campaign. Uh, so it was interesting timing there. Uh, Governor Newsom has sort of quietly over the years said maybe it's time to change the rules. And now uh, there might be a real push to change the rules going forward as well. Alexi Kossif, Cal Matters, Sacramento Press Club president, guy who broke the French Laundry story. Thanks so much <laughs> for being with us tonight. We appreciate your insights. Thank you. Always good to talk with you. That was a big story to break, too, Alexi. All right. Thanks so much. Uh